What's up everybody? This is Ian Katanak, aka the Renegade Writer from ConsciousWritersTribe.com here today to bring you week five of my deep dive into Julia Cameron's text, The Artist's Way. Week five is titled, Recovering a Sense of Possibility. And even though it's a short chapter, even though there's a lot of fluff and whimsical stories, it, with the supplementary content I'm gonna provide you, with an analysis of the lessons and exercises, this will become an integral part. And right off the bat, Julie talks about receiving inspiration from God. And most of us have a problem with that because we have a fractured relationship with God. If you believe in any mainstream religion, you have a fractured relationship with God. Fact. All of us are suffering from something called cosmic abandonment. I'm sure you've known someone with abandon, normal abandonment issues, parental issues, mommy issues, daddy issues. And, you know, the typical signs of abandonment are getting in relationships too quickly or leaving too quickly or settling for bad relationships. Anger, you know, control, um, codependency, never wanting to be alone. These are t signs of normal abandonment issues. But let's talk about cosmic abandonment because cosmic abandonment issues are the same exact thing. Attaching too quickly to religions, attaching, moving on too quickly from religions, settling for bad situations. I mean, once again, repressed anger, overly controlling our whole world. And the reason that cosmic abandonment exists for all of us until you can break out of that cycle of trauma is that we have no idea where we came from. If you're telling me about Jesus and God and Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, any other bullshit religion, then you are off. You are suffering from cosmic abandonment. You have not transcended to starting to analyze energy and how energy comes down to us. And the solution is not the atheist. The atheist, atheism is a religion. It is a dogmatic religion. And you can tell by people who believe, who are atheists. It's one of the best ways you can tell if someone is unstuck or on the right path is you just look at a massive group of them. You know, think about the hundred atheists you know and think about how they hold themselves, how, what they do with their lives, how they treat others. And it's very easy to pinpoint what's going on. The extreme Christians I know are fake ass bitches, man. Excuse me, maybe not bitches. Um, that's, they're fake ass people, you know? And we can look at every single religion and there's trends, every subset, the Mormons, the, the Catho you know, Catholicism, every single one has their own problems. But once you start realizing that a group of people should not all have problems, then cosmic abandonment starts to make a lot more sense. And there's actually a presentation on YouTube. If you probably just type in cosmic abandonment, there's a presentation on that by Mark Passio that I would recommend. I don't have that up right now. But getting back to God, I mean, Conscious Writers Tribe, we are, n there, is there is no religious affiliation and we uh, there'll be no support for any content on the website with religious affiliation because it, has been a repressive and outdated cycle and it, it can't be broken. The pattern can't get broken because it has so much baggage. The, the swamp has been flooded. There is no draining it anymore. So just saying that right now, that if you are having issues with creativity and you were religious, then it's time to go figure, go, go work on your life. We talked about this last week. It's time to work on your life a little bit more. It's time to research a little bit more. Spend some time in nature. Take some psychedelics. Do something and uh, analyze your relationship with God, with Jesus, the resurrected son, with Muhammad, with Buddha, with Shiva. And then start, then, then you can start your journey. Start, and you're like, well, what are the answers, Ian? Well, start with a gender a gender neutral God of infinite energy. And then we can start expanding from there into levels of consciousness and how that energy comes down to us. That's been being worked on for thousands of years by people who have been oppressed by religion. And that's the only, even if that's not true, let's say that's not true. That's the only inclusive religion. Every other religion, all it causes is separation, more separation. Why would you want to be a part of something? Even if it was true, if it causes more separation and more division. Because for every single Christian, there's a person who is traumatized by that dogmatic religion. And that's what we're talking about, people. 
about people who have familiar trauma, who haven't had enough exploration or connection because what starts to happen, as we see in this slide, is that when you are religious, pretend you are religious and you were raised religious and suddenly you break out, you're liberated. People think that's the end. Go to any concert, meet any hipster. They've liberated themselves, but they have no idea what the fuck is going on when it comes to energy and God and real spirituality, even street level spirituality. They still believe in government, time, money, death, uh, pain. All these simple concepts are like level two and three. They're still, they're calling for more government. They're calling for more uh, control. They're basing their life off of time. They're scared of death. They're worried about the oppressive structures and trying to create more. And that's how, it's so funny how religious people slip or switch. A lot of the liberal people are ex, grew up in very uh, religious households. And on once again, on Conscious Rogers Tribe, we are apolitical. Conservatives, liberals are all the problem. Causing less separation and more integration, more healing and not, not the heal, not the, not the, the healing that's going on now. It's, stopping the karmic cycle, stopping the wheel of dharma. And I know we're kind of getting off track, but this is so important because once again, the people who react to religion and never break out of that familiar trauma and liberate themselves with drugs and concerts and whatever, making fun of religion, they are still on the same spectrum as religion. They are still in the same controlled line that the Christians or whatever religion they got out of it. It's easy. It's action, reaction, solution. It's the Hegelian dialectic. Thesis, antithesis. So, next slide. And what what I get out of the very start of this is that we, you only get what you ask for, for from God. What you ask for is what you get. What you believe you can get and the inspiration that you can get is what you will get in return. Nothing more. Nothing more. Maybe a lot less. There, you may get a lot less. And that's an issue with vibration and alignment and coordination and, excuse me, calibration and coordination. And sometimes you're pushing too hard or not pushing enough or just in the totally wrong area. And that can be solved with things like meditation. And a lot of people get stuck in office jobs because they have not figured out what to ask for yet. And one of the best books on this, I think I maybe mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again for everyone out there, The Magical Path by Mark Allen. And Mark Allen is a solid author, everybody. He, and this is like the, all of his work almost in one. It's like, you can basically read all of his books in this book alone. And I would recommend it for a lot of, it's a very easy starter book. Unless you know about P.S. Upensky and you're already practi practicing ritualistic magic and have discovered the secrets of Kabbalah and the universe, then you probably should start here. It's very thorough. I've learned things. It's a great reminder. It's a great milestone checker um, for me. So it will be for you too. So check that out. If you like this book, check that out. I think Julie and Mark have even done some work together. So another great book about manifestation. It's, it's you know, the classic one, Ask and It's Given, Learning to Manifest Your Desires by Esther and Jerry Hicks. This is like early law of attraction, mid 2000s circuit, but it's still good. It's still good to get into all this. And just remember, we've talked about this before, this is just a quick aside. With the law of attraction stuff, all the law of attraction does, all this vibration, all these ass get you, like tapping into the flow, all it gets you is the idea. It gets you the spark, but then it's up to you to take action. You are waiting, you are now opening yourself up. Um, imagine like a wireless signal. I have a modem back here, look at right, right here, right? If you're watching the video. Here's my modem. The stronger the modem, the stronger the internet connection is. If I have a weak modem, but there's a really strong broadband connection and God and in infinite energy has an infinite energy and it can come down and give us whatever we want. But the size of our modem is determined by the size of our ask and how receptive we are to God. So I think that's very important to take into account that we need to 
focus on increasing our receptivity because there's so much we can receive. And this is how I do a lot of my articles and a lot of my videos. And these are a little bit more planned out, but a lot of my videos are very intuitive. And for instance, right before this video, um, or earlier today, like two hours ago, I sat and I meditated for about five minutes and I said, give me an idea for a video. I feel stuck. I haven't posted in like weeks or a month. I need some content. What should I do? And for the first couple minutes, I was thinking about Tashua Weisha Guru and doing this article and this and that. But then it, it, after, but the first ideas are never the ones to latch onto. The ones that come later and stay and make you feel different, a fuzzy feeling, are what you can tap into. And so that's what I got. I got you should do the artist way today, Ian. And you should really push hard on this series. So then I put together this presentation, read the chapter, put together the presentation. Even though I've been meaning to, and I have you know been stuck on this week, it came to me. And before five minutes before I recorded this video, I said, how should I come about this? How should I be doing this video? And I meditated and it came across in a certain way. And that's one of the main recommendations I can give you is to meditate, to sit in nothingness and let, after asking an idea, like asking for an article idea, asking for some inspiration, asking for the idea and letting it come to you. And if you're asking for a big thing, like how do I make $10,000? Um, in one month or this year on through passive income, that might not come in that five minutes, but you need to be receptive and be looking at all times for that. And that's the same with inspiration. You call the inspiration. This thing is always on. You can make it bigger, but this thing's always on. You just have to log on. You have to get on the internet. And with all the distractions, all the things, it's hard sometimes. So doing a little bit of a stillness practice is very recommended by me. And it's really about learning to tap into the flow. There's a river and you don't always need to be on the river. One of my favorite ways, let's see what else we got here. And there's the flow, everybody. We are tapping into the flow. And one of my best, I wish I could turn this camera around. It's a little bit sketchy to do that right now. But on my wall, right over to the right of me over here, there is three just pieces of paper with printed words on them that say flow, completion, care. They're triggering affirmational words to me. I have some other affirmations and goals on my wall too, like we all should, but those three over there, they're called primers. And that's what I want to talk about right now is primers. Primers are very good. There are certain values or affirmations that are quick and easy. Because if you look up, I've known a lot of people, they have like a wall of affirmations. There's like a hundred things and that's okay too, but that's not really gonna help you. That's for more like studying. But having primers around the house like flow and certain words that you appreciate help you get into that because your subconscious, a different level of your consciousness and a little bit later in the presentation, I'll explain why the unconscious doesn't exist. A different level of consciousness processes is processing that as I'm watching that. It's helping me flow and complete and do it in a caring way. And it changes. Every couple of months I do something else. Uh, a while black, it was consistency, love, and abundance, right? And th it changes. And once again, it's about tapping in and understanding where you're at. But I would recommend primers and I'd recommend some affirmations on your wall because if you're scared to do that in your own household, if you're scared to do that around your partner, to post things and say what you want, then you're scared of them. You're scared of their reaction and you're in fucking trouble if that's the case. So tell everyone, say it out loud because as we've talked about before, God doesn't maybe know how to get inside your head. That's a limitation that like we got from like the weird Christian programming that God can see inside your head. We don't know if God can see, know what's in our head or not, right? Universal infinite energy. We don't know if it can respond to that. So the only way is through writing or through speaking, speaking being the best, or speaking to a large, or writing or publishing to a large group of people. That is the sure way, you know, the, I, it's like, a, like Pascal's wager. We don't know, the only way to know is to say it. If this energy exists, which I know it does, you have to say it or write it to guarantee it. And let's talk about time. People believe time is real. And that's a huge part of this chapter. Let, let me flip through the text. Look how much I've done. The front cover's gone. This thing's on desk door. I'm going to have to get a new copy soon.
And she talks about time because of the river. And there's a lot of distractions. People love the kids. Kids, wife, job, husband, loud neighbors, cat, dog. There's all these distractions, right? But time doesn't exist. And viewing it as a distraction, viewing it as that, instead of having a non-partial react, a non-energized reaction, will create a lot of problems to you, for you. There is a distraction. You need to learn to become the Buddhist monk, to become Zen with it, to just absorb it and not lose the flow. If there needs to be a flow in the river, and you need to prevent that by any means possible. But if they, the flow has been broken, just rest with it. Be like, all right. And don't give it any energy. And in the back of your mind, have that goal and focus. Have where you left off in focus and finish the situation and get back to work. Brian Tracy uh, said that. He said that when someone's distracting you, 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 you listen for a second and say, I have to get back to work. And people really respond to that line, I have to get back to work. That's your off, make your space and say, I have to get back to work. And don't say, don't tell anyone, but use that one occasionally and you'll see how potent that one is. And time is not real. Once again, this is one of these things with religion and capitalism and oppressive societies. Time does not exist. There is no past. The past is a memory, a collective memory. The past doesn't exist because we create the past. We are unreliable narrators. If you ever hear people tell the same story and they don't know what's going on, or you know, I, I like I hear high school buddies tell like a more romanticized story about what happened. I'm like, that's not what fucking happened. But maybe it is. Maybe I've like degraded that experience in my mind. So who knows what happened? We are constantly creating the past and the future. The only present is now. You know, this is very simple, very simple concept, but time does not exist. And we'll get into this more on this channel for sure when we analyze Casual Isha Guru's book and our Casual Isha Guru Nobel Peace Prize winner deep dive, everybody. Check that out. That's going to be some fire. Once again, a little bit more time. And we've just got some time slides. And let's talk about rest because Julia talks about this, about this, is that rest is not the opposite of work. Rest is the other side of work. Rest is the complement to work. It's like eating a date in a cashew or like, that's not a very good one, but tequila and lime. I don't really know. I don't really do combination eating, but you guys get the gist that they're not, they're one of the, one in the same and taking deliberate rest, not just a resting, like taking an hour or two to just rest and zone and chill out, not do anything is very important. And this book by Alex... Su Jun King Pang is a very good book on this topic. I would recommend it. Check it out. Flip through it. Get a digital version. You know where to get it. Not saying to pirate it, but sometimes if you're broke out there, you're starving out, you can't afford this. So, <laughs> Yes. We have rest. So once again, rest is the huge goals and what huge goals don't happen in a linear fashion. We think that we got to grind and there's a schedule, but things don't happen like that always. Things flow and things have to start and they have to stop. The river gets jammed up. There's a log jam every once in a while and it has to stop and it rests. Sometimes the spring, this is another thing. Sometimes winter comes and it has to sit for months until the flow of spring comes back and then that water moves on down the river. Sometimes it's months. Sometimes it's even years for some people in certain areas of their life that they need to rest and focus somewhere else. And that's never an excuse, but maybe not years, but sometimes it might be a month or two that you need to take a break just to show yourself that you can do it. And the virtue trap will come. The virtue trap, and let's, let's see how she defines the virtue trap. Julia, that is. And when you make, a lot of us make these unreasonable demands of ourselves. We think we need to have this huge working, like artistic schedule then doing this all for the kids and the wife and all these things. But that stuff comes second. That's why working in the morning fast and hard is important. Because if you can get it done in the morning, then it's done for the day. If you can get your time and get your effort in and get what needs to be done, done fast, then you can 
make sure that you get it done every single day. And that's always been my recommendation. I fell at that all the time. That's something that I'm trying to do. That's like one of the main things I'm trying to do right now. And we are virtuous to a fault because a lot of creative people are very emotional. We are very emotional and we connect with others. We want to be with them. We want to do what they're doing or cave into their demands, but you can't if you're going to get things done. Solitude is the key to creativity. You know, you're going to have to be alone for 48 hours a day, six to seven days a week to actually get work done at a level unless you hit the big publishing deal or you have the connections or you're networking like a motherfucker. You are not going to get independent and big unless you're lucky or you put in that time the 48 hours a day, six to seven days a week. There's literally no other way. That's how it goes in our society. Some of the other cool things are, of course, the Virtue Trap Quiz. Doing that is very revealing. If you have a discrepancy in your life, I did that tonight. You could, it very alarming. You see that immediately, the, the discrepancies with the Virtue Trap Quiz. Also, the Forbidden Joys exercise. We've done that a couple times. That's not too different. But one of the ones I really like and I think you should take seriously is the I Wish exercise. And she limited it to 20, but if you really want to go ham tonight, I did 50. I should have maybe even did 100 because by 40 or 50, once again, with some of these lists I was talking about making, the end ones are when you have to start grinding them out and you're like, what the hell am I going to say? That's when your intuition starts kicking in and suddenly the great answers start coming out. Like my list. I wish the, the sun didn't shine so much. I live in Las Vegas, one of the sunniest places in the world. I wish it didn't su shine so much. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I've never thought about that, but it was like just kind of a random thought. I mean, I do think about that, but I wish there was a well. I wish, you know, there's not a well when we have Yucca Nuclear Mountain right next to Las Vegas. Of course not. <laughs> you know, just stuff like that. It's like, you know, that was the last two on the list. The other ones were a little bit, you know, they were cool and they were right, but they were... Fluff, in a sense. Those were like, those are integral things that I don't ever think about. I think about a lot of the other stuff. Maybe not in consciousness. And getting it down, you know, can help you once again show the infinite energy of what's going on. So I would recommend doing that. And to close, you know, some of the tasks, these tasks are for you. And I can't really tell you how to do them because, and we go over them some weeks, but these ones were pretty self-explanatory. Just do them and use your intuition and do them well. And to, for a closing concept, let's talk about the un, the unconscious is for, give, is for beginners. There are different levels of consciousness and different forms of communication. A lot of us need to talk. The unconscious is very good for beginners because it helps show them that there's something deeper out there. There's repression. There's hate and guilt and anger and lust and all these crazy things that they've been holding back for a long time and then when they would release it it's easy to define it and locate it and probe into like closed people like it's like dealing with like a kid or something when you're like helping someone re get out some repression it's like dude how how did you hold this in for so long it's like more work to hold it in than to let it out but there are different levels of consciousness like we talked with the primers and there are different forms of communication. Communication happens not just human to human, but with through, with every single kingdom out there. We think that like our our relationship with the earth is the most important. Like our relationship with animals, global warming, that's important. But the fungi kingdom has a relationship with the animal kingdom. There's so many different interrelationships and forms of communication and nonverbal communication and levels of consciousness to the point of infinity and being able to tap into those and being able to prime it in that way being able to look at it through that way instead of there's the conscious and the unconscious you know young carl jung's theory of the collective unconscious looking at it like that is important and is important and the collective unconscious does exist but it's a lot bigger than that the, these are concepts from the 1920s and the 1930s we have definitely transcended some of these things but for like i said most people have it 99.9 percent .9 people have of people have not yet so i think that's the end of the presentation everybody comment down below subscribe send me a message on instagram or on the website i'd be more than happy to talk with you about anything over you know 
email, phone, anything that you want. I want to support you on your conscious journey to becoming an influential author in this community. Anything I can do for you, let me know. If you guys have anything else, I will see you guys later. This is Ian Kadanak, a.k.a. the Renegade Writer from ConsciousWritersTribe.com. Peace.